the first problem of today is Dev3. And in this problem, we given that during your journey through computer universes, you stumbled upon a very interesting world. It is a path of n consecutive cells, each of which can either be empty, contain thorns, or a coin. So in one move, we can either move one or two cells. So just we can move from one cell to another cell or we can jump over one cell. So provided that the destination cell should not contain thorns, like the destination cell shouldn't contain thorns. Like in that, this case, we cannot go to this cell and we cannot go to this cell. So we are stuck at this point. So we need to find what is the maximum number of coins that we can collect. So this is a very straightforward problem. See if at any point we encounter that two cells, two consecutive cells are having thorns. So we cannot go beyond this point. So just count the number of cells in this part which are having coins. That is your answer. Is it clear? Yes, no. Is anyone having any doubt in this? Let me show you the implementation. So this is the implementation. In this, I have first taken n as input, then I have taken string s as input. Initially, I have declared my answer as zero, and then I'm going from zero to n. And if my i is less than n minus one, and current cell is having a thorn, this is the representation for a thorn, and the next cell is also having a thorn, then I'll simply break because I cannot go to this both of these cells and to any cell beyond this point. Otherwise, I can simply add one to my answer if the current cell is having a coin. Finally, I can print my answer. Is it clear? So let's go to the next problem. So in the next problem, we are given that in Chaya's tribe, the Chaya's tribe believe that there are n signs of the apocalypse and over time it has been found that the ith sign occurs every ai as that is in ai, AI 2 ai 3 ai so according to the legend the apocalypse to happen the signs must occur sequentially that is they first wait for the first sign to occur then strictly after it the second sign should occur so we need to find when is the nth sign will occur and when would these apocalypse happen so in this, see, the first signs occurs at uh, a multiple of A1, the second signs occurs at the multiple of A2, A, the third sign A3, so on. So first, this would occur at A1. Let's say A1 is 10. And let's say A2 is 3. So this second sign would be occurring at 3rd year, 6th year, 9th year, and 12th year. So we should uh, cons consider this as the like the in sequential order this is the first time when second sign occurred after this first sign so like this we need to find when is the nth sign occurring so what we can do start let's say at start you are at zero then when will the first sign occur so it will occur at a1 then what when will the second sign occur we can simply take first divide this a1 by at what is the time period of second sign? It is A2. And then take seal of this and multiply it by A2. Then let's say this is the time right now. So in general, T divided by AX. Like, but this will not simply, like you're going to take the simply seal because by definition, this is nothing but this is P plus AX minus 1 divided by AX. This thing is seal into AX. Don't just cancel this out. This is not cancellation. Why? Because first you need to divide, taking floor, and then you need to multiply. But the thing is, if you do this thing, this like the, this is okay, but in this we need to strictly look afterwards. 
like if a1 and a2 would have been same is if a1 is 10 and a3 is also 10 then like it a1 is 10 and a2 is also 10 then you cannot say that both of these signs occurred at 10 this year this sign would anyway you will consider this sign only at 20th year is it making sense yes no so that's why what we need to do t plus ax divided by ax into ax is it clear we cannot start at this point this ax exit sign needs to be strictly after this point t t is nothing but the time till now till which i have received a x minus one signs is it clear yes no Can you explain again this part t plus ax by x? So if uh, up till x minus one, you receive you have like uh, x minus one signs occurred at till point t, then the next would occur at t plus ax divided by x y. I want to take seal, but simply taking seal won't work because in that case, what is three divided by? Uh, what is let's say? 4 divided by 2 seal. This divides it perfectly, right? So, but this doesn't mean, let's say, the first sign occurred at 10 and the second sign is also occurring at a period of 10. So, this doesn't mean that you'll say that, okay, this second sign is also occurring at this year. No, right? So, this second sign will be considered only at 20th. So, that's why instead of directly taking seal, we will take t plus ax by x and then divide this and then multiply ax so we'll get the time at which this exit sign will occur or in which you will consider it so let me show you the implementation so this is the implementation in this i have first taken n as input then i have taken all the array a values initially my answer is zero and then i'm simply doing this answer is equal to this is my t answer plus e divided by e and then like this is like uh, flow division and then multiply this with e finally i can print my answer is it clear so going to the next problem In this problem, we are given that given an array A of length n positive integer m and a string of commands of length n, each command is either a character character L or character R. So we need to process all n commands in the order they are written in a string S and processing a command is done as follows. First, output the remainder of product of all the elements of the array A when divided by m then if the comma if the command is l remove the leftmost element from the array and if the command is r remove the rightmost element from the array a so see we are given n elements and there is a string like this so if the first thing is r l First, we need to multiply this complete thing. Print it modulo. Let's say the product is this thing. Multiplication. We need to print this thing. And then remove this thing. Leftmost. Then for in the second move, this these are the remaining. We need to again print multiplication modulo m. And now since the character is r, we need to remove this thing. So this way, we need to perform all the n operations. But looking at these, see, first of all, if you multiply this complete thing under modulo, of course, you cannot multiply it directly because it will give you overflow, integer overflow. So we have to multiply it under modulo. But then when we have to remove this thing, we'll have to do like division under modulo, right? So a better way to do this is we can do it like that also, but keeping things simple. 
what is a better way to do this is i got overflow i was multiplying all i initially yes you asked this doubt also right yeah yeah i asked this on discord yes 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 so like yes i'll explain this so we cannot directly multiply this either you have to multiply it under modulo and then when you are removing these you'll have to do division under modulo but a better way is see in first move this is getting removed in second move this in third move this is getting removed in fourth move third fourth move this is getting removed fifth move this is getting removed sixth move seventh move and eighth move right according to this string so tell me one thing in the eighth move you just have this thing in the seventh move you have this thing in the sixth move you have this thing in the fifth move you had this thing in the fourth move you had this complete thing in the third move you had this complete thing in the second move you'll have this complete thing and in the first move you had this complete thing so if i go backwards you see that i'm adding one element each time and i'm simply multiplying it in the first move you just had this element so you can print that element modulo m in the seventh you had these two so whatever you had here multiply it with this printed modulo m in the next move this element also got added to the range multiply it with whatever the product was here and printed modulo m so just reverse your <clears throat> operations is it clear like instead of going from this way go in reverse order so we are multiplying right in reverse also will get uh, overflow but i'm doing it under modulo you you were not doing it under modulo you were simply multiplying understood can you, can you write and show like how yes, under yes, modulo yes. Yes, I'll show. I have you. never done like that. So I don't know. Uh, I, yes, I yes. I'll show you the implementation. So, is there any other doubt? Like anyone else is having any doubt in this? So, let me show you how do we code this. See, first of all, since we are like removing characters, integers from both front and back. I have used a DQ, and I have inserted elements in DQ. This is my string s. So, upon iterating through the string, if si is equals to l, see, in, I have this element, then this element, then this element. So this order is fixed. First this, second this, third this. If I am going in reverse order, right? So I am inserting those in dot order. I am inserting in a vector v. and i'm removing these from my array so or dq array or like uh, instead of array i've used dq then since i have to go in reverse order i'm reversing my vector v from this point this is the implementation <clears throat> this is just reversing the queries this complete passes part is just to reverse the queries so what is done my multiplication is one i'm multiplying like e in my this thing and now this is what you were doing right this thing only this thing so if you just do this thing you can get integer overflow i have taken a modulo here after each multiplication i am doing a modulo then this is my answer for this step but since i have reversed my queries my answer is also getting calculated in reverse order so i need to reverse my answer also answer vector and then i can print my answer this won't fail any test case like it passed for me is it clear reverse v dot begin v dot end by what reverse v dot begin v dot end what you don't know this thing no no why we are doing it because we have to reverse the queries like in v i inserted elements in this this is the first first one which is getting removed this is the second one which is getting removed third one which is getting removed and when i am processing queries i am starting from this right 
so first it was just this thing at the last it will be just this thing then this before it you were having these two things before it you were having these three things so if i have to go in reverse order i have to reverse that p also right the order in which the elements are getting removed okay uh hello yes yes uh, is it possible to use segment trees like for example once we remove uh, a couple from beginning and some from end uh, we have a range right and we can get the range in log n yes you can do segment trees also uh okay any other doubts like in this there are no update queries so you can do sparse table also so when we are multiplying by e then we are taking modulo m yes and then we are storing it in mul, mul only mul variable and yes. then for another thing we are multiplying so the value of mul will won't get affected like this because we are no. modulo seeing it and then again multiplying this is, by e this is the property of modulo the property is a into b into c modulo this thing can be written as a percentage modulo multiplied by b percentage modulo so you can take individual modulo you can distribute this and percentage modulo so that's why i i am directly taking modulo with this multiplication variable and i'm storing it at n all the past modulo is stored in this and then i'm multiplying this with e and then again taking modulo i can show you this let's say you have 3 7 and modulo is 2 so what is 3 times 7 7 3 is 21 modulo 2 it's 1 right so you can take individual modulos also 3 modulo 2 multiplied by 7 modulo 2 And take so these both are ones and one into one is one. Is it clear? Yes. so in this problem we are given that two players are playing an online okay they were who you can like ankit if you have any doubts you can tag me ankit okay okay so two players are playing an online card game the game is played using 32 card deck and each card has a suit and a rank there are four suits clubs diamonds hearts and spades and we will encode them with character c d h and s so now there are eight ranks in increasing order 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and each card is noted by two letters its rank and its suit for example eight of hearts is noted as 8h so at the beginning of the game one suit is chosen as the trump suit and in each round players make moves like this the first player plays places one of his cards on the table and the second player must be this card with one of their cards after that both cards are moved to the discard pile so a card can beat another card if both cards 
have the same suit and the first card has a higher rank than the second. So for example, eight is can beat four S Y because eight is more than four. Additionally, trump card can beat any non-trump card regardless of the rank of the card. So if let's say clubs is the trump cards, clubs are the trump cards, or club, club is the trump suit, then 3C can beat 90. And th this means that trump cards can only be beaten by another trump card of higher rank. So we are given end rounds. So there were end rounds of the game. And there are two end cards in the discarded pile. So we want to reconstruct the rounds played in the game. And we want to find any possible sequence of end rounds that might would would have resulted in this pile. And that pile is shuffled. So like eventually we need to find just any sequence which would result these cards in the discard pile. And otherwise we need to print that it's impossible. So first of all, see there are, this is also another implementation constructive problem. We are given two end cards. Each card is having two things. The first one is the rank. And the second thing is suit. There is a trump suit that can beat any card. See, if we look at the problem constraints, n is less than or equals to, if the total number of cards there will be is less than or equals to 16. Like total number of matches there are going to be is less than or equals to 16. So total number of cards there are is around 32. If this number would have been, let's say a little less, let's say n would have been less than or equals to 8. So total cards would have been around 16. So then we could have simply brute forced. They like gone through every possible situation of arranging these cards. Like there are 16 factorial ways to arrange these cards. So in one arrangement, we would have received cards like this. And we, we would have checked like whether we can have matches like these. Yes, we can sort vector of strings. So, but the thing is, in this thing, there would be 30, 30, 32 factorial. And this is a very big number. We cannot fit this in this time complexity. So we have to... Can you please explain again? This 32 factorial, 16 factorial? Yes. So if let's say there were less number of cards, let's say there were 10 cards, 10 total number of cards. So there would have been five matches, right? So if there were five matches, we just needed to make five pairs out of these 10 cards. So we could have... In case there were less cards, we could have just brute force. By brute force, I mean we could have checked for every permutation of these 10 cards. And for each permutation, we could have tried matching the first two cards, the uh, second and th like third and fourth, fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth, ninth and tenth. By matching, I mean if these two cards are played, this card, this, this card, is beating this card this card is beating this card this card is beating this card this card is beating this card and this card is beating this card so if we would have checked this thing and this all these validated then this is one of the arrangements but this way we are checking through all 10 factorial possibilities there are total 10 factorial possibilities how the number of ways in which you can keep a card here is 10 because you have 10 possibilities 10 cards now one card is already fixed Number of ways to fix a card here is nine. Similarly, eight cards here. Why? Because two cards are already placed. Eight cards are remaining. There are eight possible cards that can end up here. Seven, six, all the way up till six, five, four, three, two, one. So you multiply all of these, you get 10 factorial. So now this thing won't work like this brute force because 32 factorial is a very big number. Why 32 factorial? Because n is less than equals to 16. So in worst case, n is 16. So in that case, you will get 32 factorial number ways of arranging these cards and then checking that is extra. So 32 factorial into something will give you TLE. Is it clear? What is 32 factorial? What is 16 factorial? 
Like basically, I'm telling that you cannot brute force apply brute force in this. Is it clear? Yes. No. So now what we can do is we can like decide greedily. Like first of all, let's see about trump cards. So we can sub so like first let's separate trump cards from non-trump cards. Because why? Because trump cards can beat every other card. So what we can do now for every card will first of all see trump cards can be separated out. Let's keep trump cards. These are my trump cards. These are my non-trump cards. And now in these non-trump cards, what we'll do, we'll look at, like we'll try to form as many pairs as we can. There are at max 32 cards here. So 30, in 32 into 32, like for each of these cards, we'll try to map them whether like this card is beating this card. If the, let's say this card is beating this card, we'll remove these two cards. And if this card is beating this card, we'll remove these also. The remaining are left out. But first of all, try to map these cards with like internally non trump cards. And once this is done, the remaining needs to be mapped with trump card. So one thing that needs to be checked is there are there is one, two, three cards left. So if the number of trump cards is let's say two, then if let's say the number of trump cards is one or two, then the answer is not possible. But if the number of trump cards is five, then the answer is possible because there are three trump cards that can be mapped with these three right so but if this would have been one then the answer is not possible after this let's say the answer is possible and these three are mapped with these th three these two are left so one thing that we need to check at this point is that the remaining cards is not odd if we were left with one card or three card then also the answer is not possible. Otherwise, we can like the answer is always possible and we can just print the remaining these trump cards in increasing order of their number. Let's say this is trump card is of rank 8 and this is of rank 3. So this beats this thing. Is it clear? Like simple constructive algorithm. So will we sort the yes. string? Yes, yes. The you need to sort it for this trump cards. No, no. I'm asking for the non-trump cards because we, we non-trump cards you don't need, have to sort it. Like eventually we are checking for each pair, right? Yeah, the checking of each pair will happen in, after sorting, right? Suppose 1s right. and 2s is there. That will come in sorted order. 1s, 2s. Then we can remove this 2 because 2s will beat 1s. Like so that. why do you need sorting for this? Because the order they gave in input is not in sorted order, right? But why do you need sorting? If you're checking for 1s and 2s, why do you, like, won't your algorithm work for, like, if it's 2s and 1s? Like eventually you're checking both of these, right? No, we need all S to be in one place. All H in one place, all D in one place. Place. We cannot remove one D for with two S, right? Like that. So, but why sorting? You can check this, right? You can check this. If you are trying to map I and J, you can check, right? That they are from the same. Like, let me show you the implementation. Okay, you're saying use map. No, when did I say use map? See, first I have taken N as input. This is the Trump suit. So I'm like here only, I'm separating my Trump cards and normal cards. Then 
I'm iterating through my cards like this. I haven't sorted it. You can sort it, but still you you would you would be needing either you separate separate out all the suits. But if you don't separate out the suit, separate out all the suits, you'll have to check it like this. See, if i is equals to j, then don't you cannot map this card with itself, right? So just continue. Otherwise, if the ith card is already mapped, like don't include it. Otherwise, we can check it here, right? If they belong, if these two cards belong to the same suit, then one of them will beat another. And here we can just take the minimum card first and maximum card first afterwards. Why? Because this maximum card will beat this card. And just for discarding them in future, just overwrite them. This moves is my final answer. Now, like map the remaining cards with the trump cards. So while your cards are still there, we can, if the trump card is empty, your answer doesn't exist. Otherwise, just for the remaining left out cards after this point, map it with trump cards. After this point, if the trump cards are left and their size is odd, the answer is no. This thing impossible. Otherwise, you can sort your trump cards. This will sort them in increasing, of the, increasing order of their rank. So for the trump cards, just do this thing. And this is like because trump cards is even. I can always map them. And finally, we can print our cards which were mapped in this point and in this point. So this is a simple constructive problem. Is it clear now? Yes, no. So you don't actually require sorting here. Like you can, but like either the implementation will get like a little bit more complicated if you're separating all the four suits or if you just like sort it here, the this thing won't change because you'll have to check this thing then also. So let's go to the next problem. So in this problem, we are given that we are in a nuclear laboratory that is about to explode and destroy the earth. Now we must save the earth before the final countdown. What is the rating? Uh, what is the rating of what? This question. I think like right now the rating would be there and for this question, like I cannot directly take the issue, but I think many people will like around 3000 people will be able to solve this, right? I think more around, yes, around 1600 or something. No, 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 not 2000. I, I'm pretty sure that this is not 2000. No, no, around 2000 people were, solved, were able to okay, solve okay, this. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so yep, around 1600, 1700, maybe 1700, but 1600. Yes, yes, yes. You can tag me in a query in Discord and you can share your implementation there. If you have some doubts regarding your implementation, we can discuss it. Maybe like we will have a call and then we can discuss it. Okay. So, in this problem, we are given that the countdown consists of n being between 1 and 4 into 10 to the power 5 mechanical indicators, each showing one decimal digit. And we notice that when the countdown changes from x to x minus 1, it becomes, it doesn't happen in one move. Instead, each change of a single digit takes one second. So for example, if 42 becomes 41, this will happen in one second. But if 2300 is becoming 2299, then it is going to take three seconds. Why? Because the last three digits are changed. Three changed to two, zero changed to nine, and zero also again changed to nine. So we need to find the time left before the countdown reaches zero. So, 
see we are given a value in and we are given a value in something like and we need to find how much total time is left before this thing becomes zero so how many people were actually able to solve this problem like this problem is a really simple problem only the problem statement like they have given it like that but this is a simple uh, you can say like carry like the, the way we calculate sum and take carry no one was able to solve this can we use a sort of prefix sum approach yes 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 like so did like you Yes, yes. Thousand, thousand will become one, 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 one. Hundred will become one, one, one. Ten will become eleven, and one will stay one. Yeah. That's all. That's all I did, and I just calculated prefix sums, and finally I uh, uh like uh, summed them all up and uh gave the answer. And this would have worked, right? Yeah, it worked. I got yes. accepted. Yes. So. So you said that okay, like prefix sum for this would have been something like two, two 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 nine 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 nine. Like yes, eventually it will be like this nine 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 nine. This thing you are saying, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So these will go like this, like so. Prefix sum if we take prefix sum, it will be like two two plus nine is eleven. Uh, eleven there's is... there's a three two. You have missed a three in the last. Yeah, right. Eleven plus eight is nineteen. Nineteen plus six is twenty-five. Twenty-five plus three is twenty-eight. Uh, now eight will be in the last index, and we will uh add the like the twenty to the previous index. Which uh, what which index? Uh, we have twenty-eight at the last index, right? Yes. So we will just keep a eight there, and I'll yes. add twenty to the previous index. So the second last index will become forty-five. You will read forty-five. Then five, and we'll add forty to the uh, nine, forty to nine ten. Then fifty to fifty to eleven. So it will become sixty-one. And finally sixty-two two. So it will become uh sixty-two. So six two one nine five eight. So this is your final answer, right? Yeah, yeah. Not add your like right? don't. No, like, uh, we append them. Append them yes, together. Append them like if these are string, then you could have added them. But the final answer is simply six two one nine five eight. Yes. Like what? What do like? Let me explain this to everyone. See. If this there's a two here, this two will contribute two here, and it will also contribute two here. Why? See, for it will take two seconds. Eventually, it will take whenever this like it is here, it will take two seconds when to become one here and then become zero here. And from this place, it will. I don't understand question. I did not understand question. Yes. So the question is, you are given a timer like this. And see, usually the timer in timer, these get subtracted. Like from let's say if the the timer is eight, it becomes seven, six, five, like this till one, and then zero. But in this problem, we given that let's say if the timer was twenty three hundred, then it in one second it won't become this thing. It will take three seconds because three digits change. So between two consecutive times, like cons. Time will go flow on like this only the timer, but countdown will like countdown will flow like this only. But the thing is, the time taken for countdown to go from this state to this state is equal to the number of digits that are changing. Is it clear? Mm -hmm, yeah. So this two will take two seconds here. Why? Because. This two needs to become one and then zero. So this will take two here. This will be, take nine here. 
Let's see. Let's. Now it is much clear, clean. So this will take nine here, eight here, six here, and three here. So the total prefix, why prefix? Because at this point we'll have that all of these, like all these digits before this will take 28 seconds of their own, on their own. So at this point, like we can add this 20. This is carry on and this is the remainder. Like this is the digit and this is carried on. So 20 can be added to this thing. And basically like you, there are many ways to do this. One way is this, like if it is just like how you are able to imagine this, like how these sums are going on. And uh, <clears throat> one thing that you need to make sure that these is like, you cannot like <clears throat> the values that you're getting at this point is like two for this and 60 is the total time that would have like how much time that you're eventually getting like two seconds for this and 60 came from when you'll be rotating completely this 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 so this complete thing, not this complete thing. Like this complete timer take is taking some time, right? And that thing plus you're adding this to at this state at this point. So this will get added and all of these will get appended. The consist like we can consider them as strings. Like the, if you're able to get the intuition behind this, like then it will only make sense. Like, by the way, you can implement this on your own. See what you have to do. You have some number <clears throat> like this and you usually this would have taken 23 seconds. If the counter would, would be going like in linear fashion, then it would take 23 sec hundred seconds. But in this problem, what is happening? If this three is going from 300 is going to 299, then these digits are taking like since three digits changed, it would take three seconds. So you just have to find how many digits will change for this 2300 to become zero. So how many times this digit would change? How many times, how many times will this digit change? This digit will change two times. How many times this digit will change? Three. Four. No, no. Three, it will change for just this time. But because of this also, it will change 20 times. How can this? So it changed four times to become this thing. Let's say it changed three times to become zero. Then this digit changed one. And now this complete cycle will repeat nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So like you can consider this as 10 times. It's changed 10 times. And from this point, a zero, this is 10, nine, eight. Then this digit changed to zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Like basically this digit is changing 10 times, 10 times, like one time, two time, three times here it changed. Then it changed up till here from here to here. It changed 10 times. And then from here it will become nine, two, one, zero. It changed 10 times basically because of the digit before it, this digit will change two, zero three times, like 20, 23 times, 20 plus three times. Is it making sense now? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. So this way you can calculate how many times this digit would change, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So basically, uh, twenty is coming from uh, the previous number two into ten, like that. Yes. 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 Okay. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. So because each digit is changing, and like each digit is like whenever each digit change, it will take one second. Any other doubts? So that is what I was explaining here too. Any other doubts in this? If not, we'll go to the implementation part. So this is just like uh, this guy I told. So first take n and s as input, take the prefix sum. Uh, we'll start from the last, which is n minus one. And uh, this is my final vector v. So we, I'm going in reverse direction. I'm not going starting from zero. So this is just my carry and while this loop is true, that is my carry is not zero. If my carry becomes zero or my carry becomes, like my carry becomes zero or my current becomes less than zero. How will current become less than zero? Because I'm each in each move, I'm going to the previous version. So I'm starting from N minus one. That is the last version. And if this becomes true, that means I have completed iteration so i'll break otherwise what how do we calculate sum so first my sum becomes carry then if my current is more than or equals to zero add this thing to your sum insert some percentage 10 remainder this is what we did here right exactly this thing so one nine so this eight this was 28 took eight here and added 20 to this 20 plus 25 is 45. So 5 was left here. 40 was added here. So sum plus equals to prefix of this current v dot pushback sum modulo 10. Carry is sum mod percentage 10. And current position is now one previous. Finally, if there are some <clears throat> leftover zeros in your vector v, remove them, reverse your vector v. And finally, we can print our vector V. And I'm not printing them like this. I'm printing all these in ones. So this is appending. Is it making sense? Like this code might seem like a little complicated, but just see it like this, that each, how many times each digit would change. After that, it's simple maths. <clears throat> Yes, no, anything. Can you explain this example, this 29863? 29863, yes. So, how many times this would change? Two. How many times this would change? Uh, nine, nine, uh, and 29, right? Because of this, it would change 20 times. And because of it, this being itself, it would change nine times. Right. Look at 29. How many times this, this digit would change the right from 29 to zero. And check how many times this digit changed and how many times this digit changed. This digit would change 29 times. Yes. Uh -huh. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. Yeah. You have to count just this thing. How many times is each digit is changing? Now there are many ways to do this. You can implement any. You don't have to take this thing like uh, whatever I have done here in my implementation. Just count how many times each digit is changing. Is it making sense? Like how, we, how like implementation is 
see your primary target should be to understand how like you can solve this problem because see you should always first try to solve like uh, maybe in the context you are not able to solve this problem but see you have the mentors also right so what you can do just take the idea and try to implement this on your own instead of mugging my solution up. but the idea is clear right yes no anything no down you did some carry and all the stuff this yes, i did yes, not yes. understand that yes. is the implementation part uh, like how we can actually calculate this sum so one of the ways is this thing just start from prefix sum take this carry like start from back direction like in reverse order calculate the sums in certain vector v and if there are some uh, like uh, unnecessary zeros at the end remove them reverse your v and print it so this is one of the ways to do this okay, got it so let's go to the next problem so in the next problem we given that there is a fun game where we need to feed cats that come and go the level of the game consists of n steps there are m cats the cat i is present in steps from li to ri inclusive and in each step you can feed all the cats that are currently present or do nothing so if the if you feed the some cat more than once it will overeat and will immediately lose the game so our goal is to feed as many cats like we will immediately lose the game if we feed more than one cat like uh, some cat more than once and our goal is to feed as many cats as possible without causing any cat to overeat like any cat shouldn't eat more than once so we need to find the maximum number of cats that we can feed and formally we need to select several integer points from segment 1 to n in such a way that among given segments none of none covers two or more of the selected points and as many segments as possible is this dp question yes rating uh, i think this would be around 1800 okay like uh, as many segments as possible to uh, as possible cover one of the selected points so the in this the first line is the number of test cases the second line gives us the the first line of each test case gives us n and m n being the number of steps from the reading the question how you recognize it is dp question like during the context after solving, after solving like after struggling a little bit and then like how can i come up with a solution then eventually i came up with a dp implementation uh why do we need dp actually we can just get a prefix sum and use a simple stack to get the previous maximum yes that can also be done so like dp can also be done that can also be done so n is the number of steps in this in the game and m is the number of cats now the ith line the like the next m lines contains pair of integers li and ri so li and ri is nothing but uh, the cat i is present in steps from li to ri and uh, we need to find the sum of like uh, the sum of n sum of n for all test cases does not exceed 10 to the power 6 and sum of m over all the test cases does not exceed exceed 2 into 10 to the power 5 so we need to print a single integer for each test case that is the maximum number of cats that we can feed so for explaining the problem statement see there are n steps also explain like how you got dp approach for this question yes 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 and m cats so for each cat we are given that it is from li to ri steps and uh, this li to ri is between 1 to n okay 
so now like what we have to do is we need to select several integer points from the segment 1 to n in such a way that among each segment none covers two or more selected points so let's say these are the points and these are the segments for cats so we cannot select this and this point why because the, these two points both come in this segment and this cat will overeat so that's why we can select this thing then this thing and then this thing and uh, finally what is the maximum number of cats that we are feeding in this way can anyone like okay this is also not possible why because this cat is overeating now it's okay so how many cats are we feeding how many cats are we feeding if we do like this Like it's three, right? Uh, like you are asking how many cats will feed on that index? Like how many cats are feeding? Yes, in where? Which index to be exact? Like which index? I do. I didn't get the question. Uh, you are asking uh at a particular index how many cats are we feeding? That's your question, right? No, no. Overall, how many cats we are feeding? Total in total number of cats. How many cats are feeding right now? Uh, three. Yes, three. Because the first cat is being feeden at this point, and the second and third are be being feeden at this step, right? Yes, right. So now we have to like how to do this. So they like someone said using stack. So like handing prefix pre prefix, and then like just looking at previous maximum, but. Looking at DP, like DP will give us also a straightforward solution. So, like, how did I come up with DP? Is see, at this, like, we are given L and R for each at each of these cats for which we are given L and R. We can first of all say that there is an like. At points, like what is the opening? Like the this is opening. This is an opening. Opening. This is an opening. This is a closing. Opening. Closing and closing. Right. Basically, closing and openings of segments. Then, what we can say? See, if we are iterating through points from one to n. So, for all the points that are either opening or closing at ith point i am iterating through each of these points so let's say currently i'm at ith point so first i'll consider all the let's say we can insert we can go through all the opening points all the segments that are opening at this point so what i'll do i'll Corresponding to those points, what I can do is I'll insert all the closing points, like all the closing points from this, like uh, that are opening here, right? Yes. And what I can do, I can first of all see what, how, if there are two things that I can do at this point, either I can include Either I'll feed at this step or I won't feed at this step. So if you don't feed at this step, what is the maximum answer that you can get? If you don't feed at this step.
if you don't feel that this step, what is the maximum answer that you can get? Anyone, any idea like what, 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 in DP, what, what will you take as maximum answer if you're not feeling at this point? So whatever the maximum answer was at the previous step, right? Whatever you were able to get, how many cats were you able to feed at this point is your answer if you're not feeding, right? Yes, no. Uh, and but, uh, won't we like to like have a track of the where this segment was started so we, we can like uh, take only uh, those segments, in let's say I am storing only those segments right now which are ongoing. Let's say I have a track of those segments which are ongoing at this point. So first of all, if I'm not at this step, if I'm not feeding, then I can simply take this thing as my value. Like what is the maximum number of cats that were being fed in before this point. And now if I decide to feed, first of all, I need to check that if there is something like if what is the I'll check that, okay, what is, if I decide to feed at this point, what is the longest segment? Like what is the last segment that is, what is the last ending point that is being, like that is. That is like, uh, like we can't feed any, any, anything, anything before that. Yes. Now we have to directly skip after that. Yes. So if you have to directly skip after that, the answer that will be like, what will be added here? we'll add this thing whatever the answer was before dp of i plus all the ongoing segments all the ongoing segments will be added because the all of these cats will also be feed feed it and we'll add this thing here uh can you write a state first it will be easy to visualize so let's say what is let's say where the end, segment is ending so this will be maximum of whatever the value was. Maybe like we have already calculated the value at that point and that is better. Otherwise, dp of i, whatever the value is here and how many ongoing cats do we have? So let's say there's a track dot size, like how many and I like, like what do you think this data structure should be? If you want to insert in this data structure and remove from this data structure quickly so we cannot use an array we cannot use a vector we should use maybe a set right yeah set is right and finally for this point if there is a like this was basically initially we were looking for openings now since we are going from i to i plus one all the segments which are closing at this point will remove them from our ongoing segments so for ongoing segments we have a set so let me show you the implementation. Just give me a second. So this is the implementation. This is just taking input. Basically, okay. This is my ongoing segment. So in this, I have used a multiset instead of set. Why? Because there can be more than two cats which belong to the same segment, which have the same segment, right? Yes, right. Instead of set, we'll use a multi set. This is my DP array. I'm iterating through all these steps. First, at all the at these points, if x is zero, simply means that it is an opening. So, I'm inserting this in my set ongoing set. Now, what I'll do? This is. Like this is the closing, like where will, will this close? And now what I'm doing, if I is more than zero, my DP of I is maximum DP of I comma DP of I minus one. Why? Because if I'm not choosing to feed at this step, then I'll always have the answer, whatever the answer was at last step. Otherwise, if there is no ongoing, if there is no ongoing segment, that means there is no cat here then I can simply do this thing. 
if my multi set is not empty this means that there is some ongoing there is some ongoing segment that means there is some cat which is having a segment that is ongoing through this ith point so i can calculate whatever is the last point plus 1 means after that i'll do this thing dp of this thing finally for all the segments that are closing at this point i'm removing them from my multi set removing them from my ongoing track finally we can print the maximum of this dp array so this is a simple dp solution is it clear uh yeah but like uh, i still kind of feel that we can just uh, make a prefix array and then we can get the uh, minimum seg minimum uh, with the minimum starting point and we can just iterate over uh, like pretty big of one dp this is kind of complicated but yes this, this is, is complicated a, and this has a time complexity also worse than that right yeah that has a complexity of big of one yes yes so that's it yeah and i think for joining bye bye yeah thank you